The number one question that I get asked of me is, what is the perfect home defense weapon? Well, that really can't be answered with just one gun. And if it could have, you would have already known the answer. But what I can tell you is that you have to have a gun that is suited for the individual's level of proficiency. You may choose a revolver, semi-automatic, shotgun or AR type rifle, but if you don't know how to effectively use that gun, and by use, I mean correct a malfunction instantly, then you shouldn't use that weapon in a life or death situation. Now remember what you're using this for, to defend yourself and your family from a brutal home invasion. This person wants to kill you, wants to bound, gag, potentially rape or murder your family. And because you saw some great TV show out there and the guy had a cool gun, you thought, that's the one for me. You spent a lot of money, you went and bought a bunch of Gucci gear for it, and you think you're going to run that gun when you have no manual dexterity, you've got tunnel vision, and then all of a sudden, something goes click instead of bang. Now, I hear guys talk about, I'm going to buy my wife a revolver. It has a little heavy trigger pull, so if she gets nervous, she has a lower chance of accidentally pulling the trigger. Uh, she doesn't have to worry about a magazine. <sighs> guys, if you think your woman can't handle a gun, well, you know what? You're underestimating her. And you haven't spent any time with her on the range. If you care enough about her to enter into marriage with her, have children with her, and you yourself would take a bullet for her, you owe it to yourself to teach her how to defend herself. Now, giving her a revolver, take for instance this Smith & Wesson 642 Airweight in 38 caliber. It has five rounds in a cylinder. Even the most experienced revolver users, competition shooters, take on average longer to dump the shells, reload with a speed loader, close the cylinder, and get back on target. Now, I don't, I don't have any issue with, with revolvers. I like revolvers. I think they're a great backup gun. But if my wife was huddled down in a closet with my children, I don't know that a revolver is what optimally I would want her to have. Glock 19 holds 15 rounds. Put one in the chamber, now you have 16 rounds. That's a far cry from five rounds of a revolver. If there are multiple attackers, okay, and tell me that they won't be. Tell me that there won't be two or three guys coming into the house. You're willing to bet the life of your wife and your children on that. I would want as many bullets as I could get. And I would want extra magazines with many more bullets. Doing a magazine change on a semi-automatic pistol when the slide locks to the rear is simple as as my good friend Jay Gibson would say, put the thing in the thing and pull the thing. Now you see, I didn't use any type of military jargon, right? Just put the daggum magazine in it, rack the slide, and start pulling the trigger. Wives, women out there, if your man won't show you that, watch this, I'll do it again. Put the magazine in, pull the slide, pull the trigger. There you go, now you got it. It's as simple as that. Now, I hear, I'm going to get out my 45, and I love a 45 because I don't make a 46. All right? 
1911 series, right? Hey, I love 1911. This is my personal Kimber. I love it. It's a great gun. How many rounds does a 1911 hold? What'd you say? Eight? Oh, eight with one in the nine. Oh, okay. All right. Eight. We got nine. Nine bullets. Awesome. But I only need one of a 45 to knock him down. Okay. So that guy's going to stay static, not going to be moving, right? And you're going to be able to use a two-handed grip, firm firing grip stance, and pull the trigger to the rear and make an effective shot, right? Under stress and duress, you've, you've trained on that, right? Hey, there are guys who are expert at the 1911. And I'm, I'm, I'm with you right there on a the 1911. But as far as bullet capacity, I want something that holds more bullets. Because in today's environment, people are working in pairs. They're working in trios. They got four guys, five guys. Okay? You cannot count on you making an accurate shot the first time. And it's unfortunate that I say that. But unless you're training every single day, and by, what I mean by training is go to the range, load your gun, point it forward, and pull the trigger. That shot location might as well be your first shot in a life or death situation. Now, I didn't say take time, steady your breathing, front sight, pitcher, focus forward, slowly pull the trigger to the rear, wait for the reset. I didn't say any of that. Just load your gun, press out, pull the trigger. Guys in the military, professional law enforcement, SWAT teams, they train with that every day. We're talking, when I say every day, what does that mean to you? It means 5,000 rounds a month, every month of training to get that right. So put the odds in your favor. More bullets, more time to, to defend yourself. Okay? But if 45, 1911 is all you have, thank God you have something. Let's talk about long guns. There are a lot of new AR owners out there, right? I love the AR platform. It is a complicated weapon system should you not know how to operate it? My bolt is to the rear. I do not have a magazine in. I have to load the magazine, press the paddle to run the bolt forward. Then I have to take the selector switch and move from safe to fire. Okay, lock the bolt, open. This AR shoots a 223, right? That magazine will hold 30 rounds. That's a lot of bullets. But you have to look at your environment specifically because if you go start popping off rounds from an AR inside of a confined space that's full of drywall insulation and you've got children or family members forward of that position, there is a great chance that this will overpenetrate. Okay, so you've got a great amount of, of, of firepower right here. You've got plenty of bullets. Okay, here's something else to consider. Guns going off inside of a house. Have you heard it? Have you heard how loud it is? It's deafening. Okay, so you need to consider that this gun is going to make a lot of noise and it's going to distort your environment. Now, fortunately, it's going to distort his environment or their environment as well. Okay. So if it's me, I've got a gun. Maybe I want to get some electronic hearing protection. Kind that you turn on with batteries and you can hear the outside world. However, when the round cracks off, it tightens down. You don't hear that. Shot's over. It goes back. Just something to consider. I mean, I have time. But if you've got it there available and you do have time, it'd be great to use. Shotguns, the old 870 tactical shotgun, right? This gun's pretty tricked out. I have a light. I have a forward hand grip, Thompson style. I've got a side saddle here, six extra shells. I've got a rail on top, should I want to put an optic there? Collapsible buttstock. Pistol grip, and then the plug will let me hold six rounds. 
So you can see this plug runs all the way out to the end of the barrel. This barrel happens to be 16 inches. Now these rounds are double lot buck. And this is what most of the guys think that they're gonna get. I'm gonna get me an 870, I'm gonna put some double lot buck in that thing, I'm gonna tear his butt up. Hey man, fantastic. But if you're buying this gun and this is the only gun you have for home protection, are you expecting your wife, your girlfriend, your loved one to be able to pick this gun up, run it out, and shoulder it like you do? Because I'm going to tell you right now, this thing's heavy. Coming down a stairwell, coming down a hallway, it gets heavy. And it has a lot of recoil. I'm good with it. Just make sure that your people are trained on how to use it. Now, this, this is a 20 gauge, 20 gauge youth model. EJ, why do you have a 20 gauge youth model? Well, this is my, uh, this is my kid's turkey gun. But you know what? It's also set up for home defense. Put a little optic on top, front and rear sights. You say, well, why a 20 gauge? A smaller size individual, woman, even a child can hold a 20 gauge shotgun. And we've already talked about what is that mom going to be doing with children? I can hold and shoulder a 20 gauge shotgun with children behind me and I can still fire it. Bring my hand, pump, and move kids. I can move around doors and obstacles. Okay? 20 gauge shotgun with bird shot is less likely to penetrate into another room than anything else you've seen here. You may buy the 870 Tactical for yourself. You may buy some type of Mossberg, some tricked out Gucci geared, all, everything you see on Call of Duty, you may have that on your gun. And that's great. But if you're gonna buy something that the entire family or family members can use, I recommend a youth model 20 gauge shotgun, put bird shot in it and add more rounds with a side saddle. If you happen to have an AR, fantastic. Okay, you've got a lot of rounds, great knockdown power. Watch your over penetration. Understand that in order to reload it, you've got to insert the magazine, run the bolt forward. If it's not already locked to the rear, you need to rack it. You need to pull the charging handle. Okay. You need to get some training on this gun. Guys in the military go through weeks and weeks and weeks of training with this. Same with law enforcement. You need to do the same for yourself, for your loved ones. Pistols. Okay, if I'm having to run a pistol inside of a home defense situation, I want as many bullets as I can get. Make sure that's a pistol that you can handle, that you can effectively employ, and that you can manipulate should a malfunction occur. So you've seen there's no right answer. If there was, I wouldn't be standing here and telling you what I'm telling you. Pick the gun that's right for you, right for your environment. And more importantly, a gun that you can correct a malfunction on instantly. When your life is in danger, you need to count on that weapon.